Hi, this is Bill Hintz from e and uh, This is another in a series of kind of tips and tricks for TIA portal in Siemens land. Um, what we're going to look at today is I've just got a 1200 up here, but we can do this in all the, the new processors is a way for us to give access to internal registers of the PLC to people that may not have TIA. Let's say you, for example, you're an OEM and you're shipping machines all over the place and all of your customers don't have the full blown TIA package, uh, we can actually give them access to things that they may not already have access to on, on a touch screen or whatever. Um, just to give you an example of how we do that, we use watch tables and these are watch tables are groups of variables that actually we can put together as a uh, group that from different areas within the processor that may have relevance to a single function. So maybe this is a PID loop and we're looking at the status of valves and so forth. Uh, if I go ahead and take a look at this online, I can see that um, all these things are turned off right now, but if I were to actually modify the value, I've got a, an output byte here. This is all the uh, first eight output points on the uh, processor itself. And then we also can look at the individual bits. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and force a value in there. And what that's gonna let me do is see the bit pattern that comes up in all the associated output points. Um, I can also do that with a individual point if I wanted to turn it off. Now we see the value that I had modified originally has changed and that's just the binary equivalency in decimal. Um, we can also do set points. So maybe our PID loop set point is not on our HMI, but we want to uh, change it. Go ahead and do that. So watch tables are pretty useful to be able to um, put into um, individual registers inside of the processor. And as I said, that's fine if you've got TIA. We use this a lot when we're developing um, programs or troubleshooting in the field. But if you've got customers on the plant floor that want that you want them to be able to take a look at certain registers, how do we do that? And if I go into the device configuration, first I'm going to go offline here and look at the device configuration inside 1200, I'll see I have a web server here and just click a checkbox and it's going to turn on my web server. Um, it's telling us here that we're going to actually give access to internal registers and that's kind of what we want to do. So if I look here, I've actually got this set up so everybody without a password can access it. You would probably want to change that and we can actually give different access levels and, and define what each individual um, login gets access to and their password. But today what we want to do is to add a watch table. So if I had no watch tables in there and I wanted to add one, I simply go ahead and pick the watch table and you can also do force tables here. And once I've done that, all I need to do is download into the processor and when you change the hardware configuration, you typically need to uh, stop the um, processor uh, and restart it again. But now that we've actually downloaded, let's go ahead and take a look at a just a standard web browser. And to get access to the PLC now, we just type in its IP address. It happens to be 192.168.033. That gives us entrance into the web page of the processor itself, which gives us a bunch of information on the uh, status of the processor, its diagnostics, the diagnostic buffers now available, which is nice time stamped events, everything that's happened in the processor, very powerful for troubleshooting. But the topic for the day was the watch tables. And here we can actually see that we've got the uh, watch table up there. I can turn it on so it's automatically updating. And we get read and write capability to uh, do the same things that you saw earlier with the uh, with the TIA portal. Mm -hmm.